What's up guys, so a couple weeks ago I did a video tutorial on how to mount your GoPro Max to your motorcycle and there were quite a few comments about how I edit the videos and my editing process, so here we are. If you wanna go watch that first video, I'll try to link it up here. If not, um, it's like two or three videos back on my page. You can just go check my channel and you can find it pretty easily. But to get started, first thing we're gonna do is we want to add our files from our memory card in our GoPro, the micro SD card. So I pulled the .360 files off of the SD card. You can see it's .360, .360, both files. And what we need to do first is convert these to a .mov file. So that way I can use Final Cut Pro to edit the files. So we're gonna be using Final Cut Pro so first things first, to do the conversion, um, you're gonna need to get the GoPro player. So you can just download this in the App Store, I believe, or online, super easy. Um, so get that installed. And then from there, we're gonna take our two .360 files. I'm gonna double click to open both of those up. You can see they're both opened here. And so the GoPro player is cool because it allows you to mess with a few settings here. So if you go down here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see you have this world lock option. You can turn that on and off or you have the horizon level option and you can turn that on and off. So both of those options are just depending on what type of content you're filming. If the GoPro stick is moving a lot or if it's in a fixed position, that's what the world lock is for. I almost always use horizon level on if you don't, it'll just kind of make the footage uh, hard to watch. It'll kind of make the viewer uneasy, just kind of human nature. So you guys can see, so I have world lock turned off and that will hold the position of the camera right where I place it. If I turn on the bike, it'll still be facing in the direction that I point it. So almost every single time I'm editing, I have the world lock option checked off. And we're not gonna be using the GoPro player to edit the footage, but this just helps you to play around with what settings you want before we actually convert the file. Because once you convert the file, it is stuck that way, you'll have to do it again. And the file sizes are pretty big if you want something different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to file, export as, and we're gonna export 5.6K. So this brings up your export settings. And like I said, I have world lock unchecked. Resolution 5.6K, all this stuff. I always just leave it on ProRes 422. I leave everything else the same. And what we're gonna click is send to queue. And it's just going to ask us where we wanna save it, the file name. We're just gonna hit next. We're gonna save it to my desktop. This is an old file, so we'll delete that. And then we're gonna exit out of this one. And now we're onto the second file. So we're gonna do the same thing. Export as 5.6K, advanced options. We're gonna make sure world lock is unchecked. Everything else is the same as before. So we're gonna send to queue. Save to the same spot. So now we have both files here for my desktop in the queue of the GoPro player. So what we can do is exit out of this. And what you're going to want to do is just hit start and this will convert the file. See, it's not done yet, but you can see that it's already converted it, the name to .mov. So once that's finished, we'll come back and get started. So real quick, while this is converting, uh, I want to mention something about the size and processing power of your computer. The 360 files, I notice a lot of people commenting about how the footage isn't up to what they expected. It's not as good as what they thought it would be. And I believe that most people are either using the GoPro player to edit or their phones, which would make sense. So you're going to need a computer with quite a bit of processing power. So I'll kind of show you specifications for my MacBook. I have a 32 gigabyte RAM. It's the Intel Core i9. So I spent a lot of money on this laptop just because I knew a couple years ago moving forward that I would be doing a lot of video photo editing and stuff like that. And I needed a lot of power. So I just got this so I wouldn't have to upgrade a couple years later. So if you don't have a super high powered computer with a lot of processing power, you might be out of luck. 
So just keep that in mind. I know it's super expensive to get a super powerful computer like this. Not that this is the best, but it is powerful enough. I would assume a 16 gigabyte RAM would be enough. Um, but anyways, if you're gonna be pursuing a career in content or if you wanna make content, if you're investing in yourself, uh, a computer with plenty of power is like the number one place I would start. We all have phones that work as cameras. I would start with a computer. Um, that's gonna last you a long, long time. All right, so now that we have our two files converted, I keep them the same name just to avoid any confusion. And the way you tell the difference is this one is .mov and these ones are .360. So we're gonna use the .mov files and import those into Final Cut Pro. You can get Final Cut Pro on the App Store. I think it's like three or $400. You only have to pay one time. So what we want to do first in our library over here is create a new event. We're going to name this one test. Make sure you have this button checked, create new project. It's in 1080p HD, which is right. And then we're also going to make sure this is checked to 30 frames per second. So 1080p, 30 frames per second, that's what the GoPro, um, that's what it shoots in. So we want to make sure that is matched up correctly. We're going to click OK. I'm going to click on our event test. I'm going to rename this one to YouTube because that is the standard YouTube dimensions. So say now you want to create some type of Instagram Reel or TikTok with a vertical aspect ratio. The GoPro will automatically um, form to whatever ratio you're going to use. So we're going to go up here. We're going to hit File, New, Project. That'll create a new project in the same event. And we're going to title this one... Uh, vertical for a vertical aspect ratio we still want it to be in 1080p but what we're gonna do is come down here to custom and we're gonna swap these two numbers so we're gonna do 1080 by 1920 keep our frame rate the same as the other one click OK and now we have our two separate projects one for vertical like TikToks, and then this one for YouTube so you can see the difference in dimensions for the YouTube one takes up this whole screen and the vertical one is just this little middle portion. So from here what we want to do is import our .mov files so we're gonna find those wherever you save them to. We're gonna click and drag both of them into our project and we're gonna start with the YouTube example first. So. I have two different clips, one a helmet cam and the other one is a trail cam um, posted up behind the motorcycle. So we're gonna do a little bit of an example for both. So on the helmet cam one, first thing we're gonna do is click and drag the clip down into our timeline. So since we're just doing an example, I'm gonna go ahead and trim all of these down. Since the file sizes are so big, it takes a long time to render. So if you're doing like a full project, uh, you just have to be patient. And that's another reason to get a powerful computer because it'll take less time, which saves so much heartache and frustration. So we're going to trim that down to about 30 seconds, just as an example. And what we want to do, so you can see we've clicked and dragged our clip and we've trimmed it down into our timeline, but it does not look correct. So what we're going to do is come over here to your options on the right side of the screen. We're going to come under here under orientation and then on to mapping. And it'll always be automatically set to normal. And we're going to switch this to tiny planet. And it still looks super messed up. So what we're going to use are all of these tools under the orientation drop down to position the camera in the direction that we want it to look. So. First thing that I always do is I use the field of view option to zoom way in to a more visible aspect. And then you can use tilt, pan, and roll to place the position of the camera where you want. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this around to the front with the pan option. And then I'm gonna use the tilt option to get my horizon looking level and there's a tool that you can use to help you get your horizon looking right and you can come up here to view click the drop down arrow come all the way down here show horizon and this will put two lines right down the middle and then right across the middle so this is your middle point and ideally 
you would want your horizon to look or to line up exactly with this line but I find it easier or not easier I just like the look of that warping a little bit if you will so that looks pretty good to me I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the show horizon button so now that we have our camera positioned in the angle that we want to look at we can go back and just watch the clip and this will make it so the camera stays in the exact same position and that's why we turned off world lock from before so world lock will help you keep the camera pointing if you have the camera pointing in one direction it'll stay looking in that direction um, like i said you can mess around with that in the gopro player um, to see what you want but that's pretty much the basics of importing the clip if you wanted to export this and throw it up on youtube or throw it up on your instagram you could absolutely do so but we'll get into some more details here and i want to show you again the exact same thing just with a different clip so i'm going to drag the other clip in now and this is going to be the trail cam footage so we're going to find like a 10 to 15 second part that we want to use let's do like right here so i'm going to cut all of that off cut that off there just for time purposes and now same thing so there's two ways that you can go about getting this footage to the tiny planet mode so if you want you can take the footage that we already corrected you can hit command C to copy it and then you're gonna come over to this one and you're gonna hit command shift V to paste and this will pop up and you can see that you can paste the video attributes. So we're gonna paste the spatial conform and the orientation. This essentially takes all of the changes that we made to the first clip and we're gonna paste it into the second clip. So as you can see now, we're in tiny planet mode. We're zoomed in. We're not quite level just because it's a different clip. The camera is set up in a different way. So we're gonna have to fine tune some things still. So I'm gonna use the pan option to get myself right in the middle. And again, you can come up here, turn on your horizon line, and that looks pretty lined up. So we're gonna turn this off. And you can always double check that tiny planet is selected. Your orientation buttons, that's how you manipulate each clip. And from here, pretty much you can point the camera in any direction you want. So say you want the camera pointing in the direct opposite direction. So all you would have to do is come over here to the pan option and we can go and drag this pretty much 180 degrees around so it's looking directly behind us instead of in front of us. So it all just depends on how or where you want the camera pointing. Just know that the orientation buttons here, the tilt, pan, roll, field of view, are all ways um, to get it to point in the direction that you want. You just have to use them all in unison and just double check always that you're in tiny planet mode. So from this point on, uh, we're gonna get into a little bit more detail about how to move the camera. You can pan the camera left to right. You can zoom way out, you can zoom in. And I'm gonna show you that in the vertical um, aspect ratio. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take our clip. We're gonna use the helmet cam for this one. Actually, I think it would be cooler if we use this one. So we're gonna trim this down just for time purposes. And so we have 30 seconds worth of our clip here. We can either come in here and manually adjust everything to tiny planet. We can drag our field of view or we already copy and pasted our attributes from last time, so we could just hit Command Shift V again and paste those attributes and then just make our adjustments as necessary. So we're gonna get our pan. And you can see here that the GoPro automatically adjusts to whatever aspect ratio you're working in, which is actually pretty cool. So 
Now we've got our camera pointing in the direction that we want to look. Double checking that it's still on the bike there. So now that we have the camera fixed in one position, you can export that if you want. If that's the kind of footage that you want, that's totally fine. But I want to show you guys a little bit more how to customize this footage using keyframes. So what we're going to do is same spot over here in the orientation panel. We're going to highlight these little diamonds over here on the far right side. So these are your keyframes and keyframes essentially are points in time on the timeline that you can tell the camera, I want you to pan to this point and then I want you to pan to this point at specific times that you choose. So when I always start doing this, the initial start of the clip, I always want to keep that the same. So I'm going to highlight all of these keyframes and that's not going to change anything about the clip yet. But as we move forward, so we'll play the clip and we're going to stop it at about the five second mark. And I'm going to create a new keyframe right here. I'm going to select all the diamonds and I want to pan the camera around 180 degrees, just as the same thing as before. But now since we're using keyframes, the first part of our clip, the first five seconds, it starts looking at us and then we're going to slowly pan all the way around to that second keyframe that we just made. So that's kind of how you use keyframes in a basic overview. So as long as you know that your orientation and your keyframes are all used to point the camera where you want it to look at specific times, you can go in and kind of customize it and make it special or specific to the type of footage that you're working on. So one thing that I will say is if you want to undo all your keyframes and start from scratch, you can use these little navigator buttons right here. This will take us back to the very first keyframe. We're going to undo all of these. And that's essentially, now we're at the very beginning starting point again. So say I want to start this footage looking back and I want to be really far zoomed out. So I'm going to go ahead and set those keyframes to lock in that position. And then we're going to hit play. And for the first three seconds, I want the camera to stay in the same position. So on our three second mark, we're going to go ahead and hit the same exact keyframe. That's just going to replicate the same points and it's going to keep the camera in the same position looking at the same point. So now that we hit the three second mark, you go up here, hit your, so your keyframes are locked in, but now the first three seconds are all the same, but the next three seconds, let's say I want to add a new keyframe to pan back around to the front and I want to zoom in using the field of view and I want to center myself up in the frame so now you can see if we play it once we hit the three second mark the camera switches and moves to the front so that's basically how keyframes work um, I will say don't get too frustrated. You're gonna mess up. You're gonna have to have like a, a little bit of a learning curve period. So go film yourself some test footage, come back, import it in, and just play around with it. Don't worry about you know making some really long professional looking video. I just recommend getting some practice in with it, understanding how all of these different adjusters can manipulate the clips and how you can point the camera and fade it in and out of different directions. So Keyframes are super important. I can show you again another example. We're gonna use the helmet cam this time. So we've got our footage lined up here. We've got our camera pointed in the right direction. Another thing that I kind of, or a little hint that I wanna give you guys. So we're gonna set our initial keyframe and say we want the footage to end at the same uh, angle. So we're gonna come down here to the end doesn't have to be right on the end, just close enough. 
and we're gonna mark that same exact, those same points. It's the same as the first part. So right now the camera is gonna look at the same position every time, it's not gonna change. But what this will do is say at the, let's go to the eight second mark. We're gonna keyframe. We're gonna let it go two seconds to the 10 second mark. And at, from those two seconds, I want the camera to pan, let's see, over here to the left, even though there's nothing over there. That was at 10 seconds. Now we're gonna go to 12 seconds. We're gonna want the camera to pan to the right. And then we have our final keyframe at the end just like where we started from. So if we go back and play this footage, once it renders, you can see that the camera is gonna be pointing straight on until the eight second mark when we made that first keyframe. Now it's gonna to look to the left, So we hit the next keyframe to the right, finally followed by our ending keyframe, just like where we started. And from here, all you have to do is export the file. So you hit Command E for a Mac. We'll do, we'll name it Test Next Desktop. We'll save that file. And if we want, we can post that to TikTok, Instagram, or whatever. So that's pretty much in a nutshell how I edit my GoPro Max footage. Um, the learning steps can get overwhelming and can be frustrating. So I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please give me a big thumbs up and drop a comment down below if you still have any questions about the process. I'm sure there are some things that I forgot to mention, but I think that's the gist of it. Once you have everything imported, just important that you make sure Tiny Planet is selected and that you know that the orientation is how you manipulate the clip to get it to look how you want. So that's gonna do it for me, guys. I hope that helped um, clear some things up. So now you can go get some banger footage with your GoPro Max and make a sick edit. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And please do share this video if you know somebody else that's struggling with learning how to edit their 360 footage. Um, I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, peace.